Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Phil here live on the stream. What is going on? It's the final day of my streaming week. As you know, I stream usually six straight days. Um, and this is the final day of that streaming week. <laughs> and um, I'm excited for a full, fun day of streaming with all of you. Today is Wednesday, May 8th, 2019. And uh, this is the first of two gameplay streams for the day. FYI, um, it's funny because I was about to start pre-stream, and as I'm about to open, unmute the mic and open my mouth, a landscaper is outside. They come here every Wednesday, and he turns on the lawnmower right outside of my window. <laughs> it's almost like <laughs> he's listening in. He's like, oh, it's time for pre-stream. Rev up the engine. Shit went loud as hell. So I had to... Run over and close my window. So right now, my window is closed. As you guys know, I've been talking to you guys about this all week long. It really heated up this week here in Washington State by about almost 15 degrees. And it's just going to get warmer by the end of the week. Um, so I have been sweating it out here in my office every day because I have not installed my air conditioner into the office yet. <clears throat> Reason being because it wasn't really warm enough for it until this week. And I don't have the insulating foam that I need to put into the window. So now I'm in here with the window closed because these guys are outside super loud. And I'm like, oh boy. So in a few minutes here, hopefully they'll be away from my unit and then I'll be able to go open the window again. But for now, I am in an incredibly hot, stuffy office starting a pre-stream today. Um, so everyone, welcome. Welcome to my gameplay stream. I got a good amount of stuff to talk about on pre-stream today. We've got some interesting things regarding some YouTube bullshit. Which is always fun to talk about because it's actually more funny than anything else. Um, I've got an update regarding next week's schedule. Because next week's schedule is going to actually be a little bit different um, than usual. So I'll talk about that in just a moment, okay? Not only do we have a new release, but the, just the scheduling itself is going to be a little bit different next week. Alright? Alright, so let's chat everybody, shall we? First of all, let's talk about what we're doing today. All right, we're doing the continuation of Days Gone, which, in my opinion, has actually picked up a lot, um, just as people said it would. The first 10 or so hours of Days Gone are pretty repetitive, grindy, and boring. And then once you start getting things like upgrades for the motorcycle, better shooting capabilities, and you get to better portions of the story, i.e. the third settlement camp in the game, the game actually gets much better. But the problem is you have to get through 10 hours of gameplay to get there, and I don't know why in modern game development they haven't figured out that you need to kind of start with a bang to hook the gamer so the gamer will want to keep playing. If you actually read most of the reviews of Days Gone, they basically say the game is a grindy, boring, repetitive mess. What's hilarious is that's only about the first 10 hours. You know, I've, the last, I'd say, I mean, now I'm 16 hours in, and I would say the last six hours of gameplay have actually been quite good. Uh, with the story really picking up, learning more about these freaks slash zombies, learning about what happened to uh, Deacon's wife, and also a lot of character development with both Boozer and Ricky and, and Iron Mike and others in this camp that you've been at. So for me, I'm like, this is really good, but why did it take so long, right? So if anything, this is a, a case of a game that basically did not have a good start but now it's actually getting much better in the middle, which is good. But I, you got to question the game reviewers. Did they actually even finish the game? Or did they just kind of play the first 12 hours and say, oh, this isn't very good, and then review it and pretend like they did? Because it seems to me like if you didn't get to the middle, you wouldn't even know this stuff. And a lot of them didn't mention this in their reviews, which is pretty funny. Okay? So, um, four more hours of Days Gone today. I'm hoping for more great story because, like I said, the last two sessions we've had really good story and it's turning out to actually be, you know, overall a, a pretty decent game as long as, you know, you can suffer through those first couple segments. So, uh, we'll see. I hope it, ke it keeps up on the level that it's been at because it seemed to be pretty good the last couple sessions. All right. Uh, later tonight, my last, my last, let's try this again. My late night stream will be Black Ops 4 Blackout. Now, I played this over the weekend. And when I did, it was the new version of the map the Battle Royal map, where the dam had broken and there was water in certain segments of the map. Um, what's funny about this is that, for some reason, I got made top five my first game, 
And then after that, I couldn't get anything going at all. I basically got owned, like, repeatedly. So it was, like, the opposite, because usually I start off shitty, and then I build to, like, a climactic finish where I make top five, and sometimes I even win. It was kind of the opposite when I played it over the weekend. So I'm not sure how it'll go tonight. FYI, the blackout streams are some of the most interactive ones that I do, where I have lots of opportunity to talk with you guys and just kind of chill and shoot the shit. So I hope that you'll be here tonight for that. That's around 6.45 p.m. Pacific time, okay? Now, tomorrow, Thursday is my day off, all right? Just so you guys know, um, not streaming tomorrow. It's my one day off of the week. I got a lot of stuff lined up that I'm going to be doing with my wife. So uh, we're going to be very, very busy. And uh, I'll be back on Friday. So what am I doing on Friday? Well, I'm playing more Days Gone. And then I'm going to be doing Life is Strange 2, Episode 3. And you might say, why is he doing more Days Gone again? That's two streaming days back-to-back of Days Gone. Well, I'll explain in a moment. But the first stream will be Days Gone on Friday. And then, yes, I'll be doing Life is Strange 2, Episode 3, uh, Friday night. It's actually releasing tomorrow. But because I'm not here tomorrow, I'm going to play it Friday night. Okay? Then on Saturday, I'm doing Mortal Kombat 11. Why am I doing Mortal Kombat 11 on Saturday and not Friday? Well, because it's going to be a special weekly lobby where I play with Brian Kekin and we have an open lobby where other people can join and play against us. We tried this last week and it was semi-successful, but we had a lot of problems setting up the lobby initially, which ended up wasting a lot of time. Instead, this time we know what kind of what we're doing. So Kekin said that he would try to set it up a little bit on the earlier side, get, get, you know, get people lined up to play, and that way we could get a lot more gameplay, a lot more variety of gameplay in, okay? <clears throat> So, that should be fun. That's going to be Saturday's main gameplay stream, all right? And then on Saturday night, I believe we're going to be swinging back to the chill gameplay rotation, and so it looks like it's going to be Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations on Saturday night, okay? Then on Sunday, I am up in the air. If it's Sunday, I may play more Mortal Kombat and check out a new character, or I may just go back to Days Gone. I guess it's really going to depend on how does today and Friday sessions of Days Gone go. If they're really good and the story's still good, I'll probably want to play Days Gone again on Sunday. But if it's not, and if it's slowed down or whatever, for whatever reason it's not as good, um, then more than likely we're probably going to want to do some more Mortal Kombat, a new character on Sunday. All right? So it depends. Let's see how it goes. Then on Sunday night, more chill gameplay. More than likely it's, we're just going to keep going through the rotation. Um, so maybe it'll be, uh, you know, Minecraft again. Uh, we'll see. Okay, we'll see. Now, coming up this week, we have a big new release on Tuesday. It's going to be Rage 2, the new game from id Software. I'll be honest with all of you, Rage 1 I played back when it was a brand new game on PC. I wasn't impressed. I thought that it was kind of just meh. It was alright, but it didn't really innovate that much and wasn't that great of a game. It was kind of underwhelming, and I think a lot of people kind of felt the same. But, since then, id Software has come out with many other releases that were quite impressive, including the Doom reboot and a couple Wolfenstein games that were quite good. So I'm hoping that Rage 2 lives up to the hype of what id Software has been putting out recently. And let's hope that it ends up being good. Alright, so that's going to be starting on Tuesday. Okay? So this week, we'll still be balancing Mortal Kombat with Days Gone. I don't know how long Days Gone is. You know, another three, four sessions. Maybe I'll finish the game. I don't know. So we'll have to see. Um, but Mortal Kombat, I still have a ton of stuff to cover in the game. I mean, I've only touched maybe half the cast, if that. Um, so there's still a ton of stuff to do. A ton of characters to check out. You know, more more crypt, more time towers, etc. So uh, I will be continuing on with Mortal Kombat and Days Gone. And then on Tuesday when Rage 2 comes out, that's going to hit the rotation of new releases. So we're going to have a lot of stuff to juggle for a little bit here. Um... In May, okay? Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about next week's schedule. Because as you know, what I've been doing typically is every week, I've been taking Thursday off as my day off, and then I usually come back on Friday, and that's the beginning of my streaming week of six straight days. Well, this week, it's actually going to be slightly skewed. Reason being is Kat's schedule, as well as the fact that we've been trying to schedule haircuts. For a long time, Kat and I both need a haircut badly. It's so bad. My hair was so long that last night I couldn't take it, and I grabbed a pair of scissors, and I trimmed the hair in the back of my head and over my ears. I'm not even kidding. I couldn't stand it. It was like, dude, I can't wait to get a fucking haircut. This is driving me nuts. It's already so hot in the office. I just need to fucking cut this shit myself. So I did. I trimmed a little bit. Um, but we've been trying to get haircuts. The problem is that our hairdresser, who we've been going to, 
um, has Fridays as her day off. Excuse me, not Fridays. Thursdays as her day off. And Thursday is the day that we've had off for the last, like, two months. <clears throat> so we've never been able to schedule our haircuts. Um, you know, we've never been able to go get our haircuts in the last month and a half. We've been trying, and we can't do it. So this week coming up, not this week, this week, but the week after, all right? Kat actually is going to have Friday off. So we're probably going to take that Friday off instead of the Thursday. And that way, that's going to allow us to schedule our haircuts that day. Um, but that means that the schedule is going to be pushed by a day. So actually, in reality, when I come back this Friday, that means I'm going to be streaming Friday through Thursday. That's seven straight days of streaming for you guys. Okay? Seven straight days of gameplay. And that's good because not only will we get lots of progress in games like Days Gone, etc., but also Rage 2 begins on Tuesday. That'll give me like, you know, three solid days to be playing Rage 2 <clears throat> before I even take a break. Okay, um, so, yes, that's the deal. So this week coming up, as I've already mentioned, it's going to be Days Gone, Mortal Kombat, and then Rage 2, and we'll all be streaming every day, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then it looks like that Friday the 17th will be my next day off, okay? Uh, so there you go. <clears throat> that's how it's going to go, all right? Now, before we get to... The usual schedule of pre-stream, meaning, you know, the plugs and then the shout-outs. I have a really quick topic I want to talk about, all right? We all know how bad YouTube's automated systems are. I mean, whether it's for copyright, whether it's for content ID, whether it's for whatever it is. No matter what their system is, demonetizing for violence and stuff. It's all garbage. It's run by robots. It doesn't have any kind of a subjective eye on anything it's just a, a, a an algorithm that runs and 95 percent of the time when these things identify a video for either a copy content id or demonetization it's incorrect it's erroneous but they don't care their excuse at youtube is oh the way you know our business is too big for humans to to, to 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 do anything with so we have to write all these robots and algorithms to do everything for us even though they're all faulty and they don't fucking work okay <clears throat> Now, every day, you know, me being a content creator that's been around for 11 years and having some, you know, at this point, I believe people did the math and said that I probably have over 80,000 videos on YouTube. Yes, that's not an exaggeration. Between DSP Gaming, the original Dark Side Phil channel, the DSP Street Fighter channel, the KO Gaming channel, and, you know, the other channels that sadly were shut down, like uh, Red Dead DSP, um, I had something like 80,000 videos on the internet, okay? That's pretty insane when you really think about it, okay? Every day, no exaggeration, I get multiple notices from YouTube that more videos have been content ID flagged, that more videos are being taken down for con for copyright. In fact, my entire binary domain playthrough, anyone remember that one, binary domain from back in the day? The game that kind of wanted to be Mass Effect? Um, that whole playthrough is blocked by Sega. For whatever reason, Sega has blocked the entire playthrough and no one can watch it anymore. No explanation, they just blocked every single, you know, video of it. So I still get emails about this stuff every day, all right? Usually I just shrug it off, I'm like, whatever. Sometimes it's a, it's a video that's a newer video and I get pissed and then I'll dispute it because I want to obviously get the rights back to my newer videos that most people are still watching. But in general, um, when a video from five to ten years ago gets claimed or whatever, I don't give a shit, right? What am I going to do about it? Sit here and... Spend tons of time arguing it when it, it, it doesn't really affect anything. It's a drop in the, in the bucket, as they say. In this case, it would be like the drop in the ocean with the amount of videos that I've got out there. But anyway, the reason I bring this up <clears throat> is overnight, I got all these messages from YouTube. It seems that YouTube is systematically flagging every single video of Street Fighter 4 gameplay footage that's ever existed. This is not an exaggeration. Every single video of Street Fighter 4 footage that's ever existed, gameplay-wise, and they're flagging it saying that it's part of Capcom's tournament series. So, for example, you guys remember right before I left Connecticut in 2014, I had what was called the Final CT Throwdown, where I had all my friends come over and we played Street Fighter 4 for the final time together, and I recorded those videos and uploaded them to DSP Gaming. According to YouTube... Those videos were actually from the European Capcom Cup tournament series and are the legal property of Capcom. And therefore, they've all been claimed by Capcom. Uh, 
Oh, oh, oh. I wasn't aware that Connecticut was in Europe and that my, uh, my condo in Connecticut is apparently the tournament hub for Street Fighter. And therefore, any footage of Street Fighter that I ever recorded is apparently the legal uh, property of Capcom now. <laughs> you see what I mean? So here's what happened. Here's In reality, here's what really happened. Capcom and all their stupidity, because it is, it's stupidity, told YouTube, here, here's a bunch of footage from our major tournament series, and we don't want anyone reposting this footage, so put this into your content ID system. YouTube did, but their content ID system is complete shit, and so what it's doing is flagging moments during gameplay that look the same, and flagging anyone's videos of fucking Street Fighter 4 that even look remotely close, and claiming those for Capcom. Now, Capcom didn't intend to do this, you know? Capcom did not say, oh, we want to claim every single Street Fighter 4 video on YouTube to make money. That's not their intention. Their intention was to protect their own tournament series of videos so people wouldn't just rip them and re-upload them somewhere else to try to make money for themselves, and I totally understand that. The problem with this is that YouTube's content ID system does not work. I've only said this about... 25 times a year for the last 10 fucking years it doesn't work the algorithms don't work properly they always misidentify the videos the last time we talked about this was a couple months ago when it was the composer behind apex legend soundtrack all right had loaded the soundtrack of apex legends which no lie constitutes one song the intro song when you're dropping out of the dropship down onto the map okay um that song was loaded into YouTube because they wanted to start selling that song on iTunes. And when they did that, everyone's videos of Apex Legends were getting claimed and matched up saying that it had that song in it. And so they were getting revenue from everyone who played Apex Legends. It doesn't make any fucking sense. The composer himself admitted on Twitter that's not what he had intended, but he hoped that those smart guys at YouTube could figure it out. They don't. They don't figure anything out. They put it in a robotic, automated algorithm. They press the button, and then they walk away. They don't fix it. They don't refine it. The thing just fucking doesn't work, and it never has. So how these companies still to this fucking day are under this oddball misconception that content ID works, I have no fucking idea, because anyone who uses YouTube regularly will tell you it doesn't. All they need to do is five seconds of research to real people who use the website instead of listening to the bullshit PR spin and the marketing spin that probably YouTube's marketing team tells them. Oh, you want to use our content ID system, pay us some money, and then load your content into it and we'll make sure no one steals your content. It's bullshit. And they all fall for it because they're fucking ignorant. They're ignorant of the internet. They're ignorant of internet culture. They're ignorant of how YouTube works. And they never talk to any YouTubers to find out if it works or not. I could just tell... From when I talked to that composer of Apex Legends on Twitter, this guy was completely ignorant of how Content ID worked and just thought that it would work without any hitches and thought that YouTube would fix it immediately when in reality they haven't fixed the damn thing. People's videos of Apex Legends still get claimed and there's nothing anyone can do about it. So, all that being said, um, I just thought this was a funny story because I almost guarantee you that more and more every day more and more of my street fighter 4 videos from over the years are going to get claimed i mean just think about it guys street fighter 4 came out in 2009 i played the first version then i played super street fighter 4 then i played super street fighter 4 arcade edition and then i played ultra street fighter 4 so over the years i played four versions of street fighter 4 and keep in mind back then i recorded per match it wasn't like today where i record our segments i recorded each match individually so can you imagine the thousands of Street Fighter 4 videos that I have out there that are now going to slowly get claimed because they've loaded in these, you know, Capcom tournament series into Content ID? Can you imagine how everyone's videos of Street Fighter 4 will now get claimed? And in, in reality, guys, is this a humongous problem for me? It's not, all right? Again, it's a drop in the, in the ocean for me. Because I've made so many videos over the years that every day I could get like 10 to 100 videos claimed. And it's not that big of a deal because the bottom line is, first of all, people don't watch the old videos that much. They're old. You know, who's watching Street Fighter 4 coverage from 7, 8 years ago at this point in 2019? Not a hell of a lot of people, okay? Unless you're just reminiscing about the old game or whatever. Um, You know, and number two, on a daily basis, I put out 
enough gameplay footage. You know what I mean? Like, I put out at least four to six, if not longer, amount of hours a day of gameplay footage to kind of make up for that anyway. So, oh no, a couple old videos got claimed, but I put out new videos that people are watching. You see what I mean? So, it kind of negates any negative impact. So, in reality, it's not horrendously bad for me. But can you imagine if you were a content creator um, who only did Street Fighter? Just think about that. These guys who are pro-level players, all they do is play Street Fighter. They rely on your watching of their footage of Street Fighter in order for them to make a living. And up to now, it's been fine. Up to now, they've never had an issue. But now, all of a sudden, they notice all their videos are getting claimed by Capcom erroneously because of YouTube's algorithms. What the fuck? How is that fair to them? You know? Um, seriously. Like, that just get Like, imagine if you're one of these, these, uh, teams. These teams, like, for example, Alex Valle, for, you know, uh, former, you know, really high-level, pro-level Street Fighter player, runs an actual team of competitive players outside of California. Imagine if all their footage on their channel that they've ever put up gets claimed by Capcom now, and they can't make any money on their YouTube ever again. <laughs> <sighs> but anyway, I you know this is all just me kind of venting a little bit about YouTube. Every once in a while I do this, and I apologize for those who just don't give a shit, but I just think it's funny that YouTube thinks that my local footage of Street Fighter Four filmed in my Connecticut condo is from the European Capcom Cup Tournament Series. Okay, then. I mean, that's probably giving me way more credit than I deserve to say that I was playing at a tournament level at any time in Street Fighter Four because I know I wasn't. <laughs> okay. All right, so by the way, the landscapers are gone. I'm going to go open my window again because it is getting very hot in here. Okay. There we go. Oh, my goodness. How ridiculous. Okay, guys. <laughs> All right. Let us now move on to the usual plugs segment of the pre-stream where I explain how you can help out. Because, ladies and gentlemen, it's 2019 and things are way different than they used to be. At one point, you know, back in the day when I was a full-time YouTuber, uh, I made a living solely on YouTube ad revenue. Just the ads on my videos made so much money that I was able to make a living just pumping out videos for YouTube on a daily basis. Well, as of 2017, that all ended. Um, YouTube's bottom fell out. They lost the vast majority of their major advertisers. And I basically had to change things up um, in order to, uh, oh my god, you've got to be kidding me. Guys, listen to this. I'm not even kidding you. I just got an email from YouTube. My Azura's Wrath demo gameplay part one has been claimed by Capcom because Capcom loaded their E3 live stream of Azura's Wrath from like 2012 into YouTube's content ID system and it identified my demo gameplay as their E3 stream. And so it's been claimed. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. This just happened live. So it seems to me it's not even Street Fighter. It seems, I guess, Capcom loaded a bunch of all their official stuff into the content ID system, and it's erroneously claiming everyone's videos of Capcom ever. <sighs> How fucking stupid. All right, so back to the subject, guys. In 2017, YouTube's bottom line fell out. They lost the vast majority of their major advertisers, and it basically became completely impossible for someone like me, who's not a ginormous person on YouTube... To make a living doing it anymore. So I changed and I adapted and I became a full-time live streamer. And it was tough. But over the last two to two and a half years, I really feel that I've grown as a, as a content creator. I'm a lot better person now, I feel. Uh, the content I put out was a hell of a lot more positive. I'm not all about just being negative constantly anymore. And I enjoy doing fun interactive streams with you guys on a daily basis. But that being said, I now rely on your crowdfunding support in order to keep doing what I'm doing because I can't make a living on YouTube anymore. The YouTube videos I put out are just archives of my live streams, which is great and fine. I'm not going to give up on those people who have supported me so so long over the years. But at the very same time, um, you know, I realize that I need to really focus my efforts over here on Twitch where the live streaming is where it's at. This is where growth opportunities are and everything. So, all that being said, if you enjoy all these daily live streams that I put out and you want to see them continue... And you want to see the daily videos on YouTube continue. And you like everything that I do. I would ask that you please, if you can, consider contributing in one of the various methods I'm about to describe. Because this is the stuff that keeps everything going. Keeps the bills paid. Keeps the lights on, etc. Alright. Number one. 
uh, Patreon at patreon.com forward slash dark side Phil. I have a Patreon campaign that I run every month where your monthly pledges earn you personal perks. I'm not going to go into massive detail about them. If you want detail, please go to the website itself. But that's one way you can contribute. And thanks to anyone who is a current patron of mine. Number two, I have a Teespring shop. You can see an ad for it on your screen right now. It's where I sell a bunch of fun merchandise, including t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, stickers, and mugs. Great quality stuff. I can attest to it because I own a bunch of it myself, and it does not really fade or get old. I've had some for two years, and the shirts are still great. So give it a look. Anything you buy helps me out, and you get a really cool, high-quality collectible. Thanks to anyone who checks out my Teespring. But in particular, if you're here on the live stream, all right, I slap my leg as I say that. On the live stream, leg slapping emphasis. And you would like to contribute during the stream and get credit for your contribution via a shout out. You absolutely can. If you cheer with bits, subscribe to the channel, or tip me during today's live stream, you will get a shout out. <laughs> oh, I'm slapping my leg today. Um, but yeah, I'll give you a shout out during the stream, in particular with Days Gone. Um, there should be ample opportunity for me to give you guys shout outs for your contributions. All right. As you guys can also see at the top of your screen, we have a Stream Stats leaderboard where we track things such as top cheer and top tip. So that's an, another extra way if you're the top cheerer or top tipper of the day that you can get recognition. And we currently have a running tally of those who have contributed via cheering this week at the top of your screen right there above Stream Chat if you guys don't see it. So that also tracks contributions. It's another way for you to get extra recognition. Okay. So a few things to mention. Number one, this month we do have a subscriber goal of 500 subs. We're under 50 subscribers away from that, so thanks to anyone who has actually contributed. I appreciate that. Um, and I want to hit it, obviously. If we hit that goal this month, I'm going to be doing a special retrospective marathon event where we go back down memory lane for the last 11 years and we watch things such as gameplay, vlogging, game reviews, series, and the like. And I'll be doing reactions and commentary about those things that we watch together i've done this three times in the last year and people absolutely love these events they come out in droves they enjoy it very much so i'm looking forward to more all right i want to make it happen but you guys have to sub and make it happen we have to hit 500 subs by the end of this month we've still got three weeks to go but please consider subscribing when you subscribe to the channel you get many benefits one of which is getting access to over 30 emotes here on the channel. You also don't have to watch advertisements when I take ad breaks, and you get a cool chat crown badge to show how long you've been uh, a loyal supporter. Okay, pretty cool. <laughs> All right. Now, real talk time, everybody. Right now, behind the scenes of everything going on on streams and the like, I'm going through some tough times. I don't really want to disclose what... The tough times are at this point because I don't really want to bother you guys with this stuff. I just don't. Um, I've had enough, you know, all the drama we've had over the past few months with taxes and everything. I don't want to even bring it up. But the bottom line is I need your support right now. And the best way that you can help me if you absolutely can is to tip me today. Okay? By tipping me, that means those are funds that I can get right away and I can use towards things that I need to use them for, i.e. bills. So please consider tipping me if you are going to support me today in any way. That's the best way to do it. It helps me out the most. I still appreciate everything else, and I should say this up front. Contributions are much appreciated. They do keep stuff going around here, and they help me out, but they're not required. I just enjoy hanging out with you guys and having fun on stream. But the bottom line is, with the YouTube thing falling out two years ago, I do rely on your guys' support to keep stuff going. So please, if at all you can, please consider tipping me today. There's two ways you can tip me. Below the stream, there's a button that says tips jar you can click on. Or you could type exclamation point tip into the stream chat. That'll bring up a link that you can click on. And you'll go to my PayPal page where you can leave a tip anonymously. Or you can leave your name in a message. It's up to you if you want the shout out. Some people would rather prefer anonymous. So that way they can't basically get harassed by people um, for doing it. Um, and another misconception is that, oh, I, I, Phil, I'd love to tip you, but I can't because I don't have a PayPal. Well, guess what? You could tip without a PayPal. You just use a debit or credit card. There's a button to do it right there on the PayPal page. Okay. So please consider tipping me. It is the best way to contribute. It helps me out the most. Thank you to everyone who is you know, contributing via any way. Okay? All right. Um, so all that being said, let's get the shout-outs, guys. Let us get the shout-outs for those who have contributed. All right? All right, here we go. So overnight, we had many people who jumped in and contributed, and I want to say thanks to all of you. We had Golden Colts who did several cheers, and he was actually testing overnight if this bleed purple cheer mote still worked, and it did overnight. I can't confirm if it still works now, 
uh, at least as of yet. But just so you guys know, if you do cheer with bits today, if you use the bleed purple cheer mode, it may give 10% bonus bits for free. People have been using this for about a week now, and it's been very helpful. So please consider using it if you are going to cheer. It's bleed purple um, cheer mode, and it gives 10% bonus bits to any streamer, at least until it runs out. I believe they're almost at the end of this. So we're at the very tail end. Oh, wow. Okay. Mo, Mo Easy just looked and said 14.9 out of 15 million bonus bits have already been used. Holy shit. So we're on the very precipice, guys. <laughs> Alrighty then. Um, so anyway, thank you to Golden Colts for those overnight cheers. Also, Infinite55 did a 200-bit overnight cheer. So thank you to both Golden Colts and Infinite for your overnight support. It is much appreciated. And also, Tantamounter did a 300-bit overnight cheer. So wow, thanks to all three of you. I I've said this before, I'll say it again. It's really awesome that you guys keep me in mind even when I'm not broadcasting. I mean, I can't be here all day. I am here a long time. You know, I start at 10 a.m. and some nights I'm, I'm streaming, you know, upwards of 10 p.m., right? But it's awesome that overnight you guys still keep me in mind and come by and support when you can. So thank you to anyone who does that. Thanks very much, okay? Now, continuing on, Rob got the tipping started today with a $10 tip. And he said, I won't be here Friday or Saturday. Major birthday celebrations. That's right. Rob had said that it is his birthday this weekend. So, first of all, Rob, I would like to wish you an early happy birthday. I hope that you have a good time. Hopefully, you have some really fun stuff planned for your birthday. Um, you know, I didn't really get to celebrate my birthday this year because uh, I was working my butt off before my, my trip to Connecticut and, you know, didn't have time to do anything. But it, that's life, right, as you get older. Good to hear that you're going to be able to do something. And I wish you the best, and thank you for the, t the tip and the support. All right. Shout out to Jerry Lawler, who tipped me $5. It says, who do I talk to to get unbanned? Mods won't respond to my whispers. You need to email me at darksidefillahotmail.com. You need to explain your situation and give me your Twitch name. I can research it myself and see if and when you were banned and why. Um, and try to figure out if it's worthy of an unbanned consideration. Okay? Alexander Rossi did a 50-bit cheer, and he did use the Bleed Purple emote, so it is still working. And he says... If Amazon ever releases a video on demand website to, be, to, to directly compete with YouTube, would you switch over? Oh, well, let me put it this way. I would definitely try to use it. Okay. I don't know if I would 100% switch over to it, but I would give it a shot for sure. And I think that I'm not the only one. I mean, there's probably a giant amount of people who are disgruntled with YouTube. We don't like how YouTube's changed over the years, how the, the advertisements fell out of its bottom line because they basically automated the whole site. And we want a place where we can feel like we can not only have someone have our back again instead of illegally claiming our fucking content constantly, but that is a place that, uh, you know, is actually going to be serious and, and, and have people involved in a process rather than robots. Um, I absolutely would try an Amazon on-demand video service. You know, there were rumors about it as, as early as two years ago that they were going to do it, and they never did. They never did. So I don't know if they're ever going to. I think they would actually beat YouTube, if you want my opinion. I do. I think that all they would have to do is tweak the YouTube formula a tiny bit and they could surpass YouTube. But the bottom line is, I don't know if it's ever going to happen. Okay. So thank you, Alexander Rossi. I appreciate that very much. Hank Duma just took me $10. So technically he's tied for top tip. However, he came in second. So Rob does stay up on the leaderboard. And he says, your YouTube channel is also very important for me. Because I rewatch your old playthroughs. For example, I've rewatched your playthroughs of Chrono Trigger, Blue Dragon, and now I'm rewatching Mad Max. I plan to rewatch Rage before next week. And yeah, I get that, Hank, totally. Like, I know that there are people who maybe they will watch stuff on stream when they can. And then what they like to do is go rewatch older playthroughs to refresh themselves for newer ones, right? Like, right, right. Rage 2 is coming out this week. Why not rewatch my Rage 1 playthrough? Um, I totally get that. And. That is why I would never give up on the on-demand stuff. Even though YouTube's you know, ad revenue did fall out from the bottom and I barely make anything over there, I still you know, put up with the uploading of the videos and putting into playlists and all the problems I have with processing of videos that freeze and all kinds of shit. I put up with it because I realize that there is still a large group of people, thousands of people, that on a daily basis come to DSP Gaming on YouTube to watch my stuff, whether it's new or old, and I appreciate that. Uh, what I will say is this, you know, obviously, Hank, you already are doing this, but if you're one of the people, because a lot of people watch these pre-streams on YouTube, if you're one of the people who only watches my stuff on YouTube, 
you don't come to the live streams, I would ask, please, at this point, consider contributing in one of the methods that I mentioned during these videos. You know, the tips link is in the description of every YouTube video now. You could leave a tip just by looking at the description of the video. It has it in there. Um, you know, your support is much appreciated and needed because, you know, just watching the videos on YouTube is almost nothing at this point. I am reliant on solely on the crowdfunding you hear at this point, really, to get to keep stuff going. So please consider supporting, okay? But thank you, Hank, for the $10 tip. I appreciate it. Uh, Carried Diamonder just did a 170-bit cheer, okay? Thank you very much, Carried Diamonder. They said, Su sucking Sam's vacuum repair parts. Okay, then. I don't know... <laughs> I don't know what that's a reference to, but you are the top cheerer of the day. I spelled that wrong. And that was a 170-bit cheer with the bleed purple cheer mode as well. Thank you very much for that. Very nice. Uh, shout out to Fruits07 who cheered and said, Do you like Will Smith the actor? I love him. Um, do I... Excuse me, that was disgusting. Um, do I like him... As the act, as an actor, yes, I do. I appreciate his skill, his craftsmanship, and his work as an actor. I've seen him in many movies where I thought he was basically the best actor in the damn movie. All right, do I like him as a person? I don't know him as a person. A lot of people say that you know he's into heavily into the fucking uh, Scientology shit and stuff, and yeah, you know, I'm not gonna get into that. Um, you know, I'm not. I'm not gonna touch that with a 500 foot pole. Um, but as an actor, I do like him. Uh, Hodor Targ cheered and said. As a European, I thought that men visit barber shops and ladies go to the hairdresser. Do you appreciate the special care for your hair in the salons? I would recommend that you buy your own hair clipper for buzz cuts. You would look fresh and save some money. Well, first of all, I don't want a buzz cut. If I, the truth of the matter is, when I was younger, I got a buzz cut for a long time. It was basically high school, end of high school through 2010. I always got a buzz cut. And then in 2010... When I decided that I was going to start doing YouTube as a full-time thing because I got laid off from my office job, I said, I'm going to grow out my hair, and we're going to see how it looks, okay? And ever since then, um, you know, I've gone to a... When I lived in Connecticut, I did go to a barber. But then when I moved out here, um, right across the street kind of from where I lived, there was a hair master's hair cutter place. And I just walked in one day, and, you know, this woman cut my hair and did a really good job. And I said, why not just keep going? Now, since then, it's a funny story. Um... She actually got promoted because she was such a good person. She was a good, so good at what she did, haircutting. She got promoted and now has her own store. Now, it's not here. I have to drive a little bit further out to go to it. But it's her own damn store. And like I said, I've now gone to her to get my hair cut for five years. And she does a great job. She, you know, she does cat's hair as well. Cat loves the, the hair that she gets, uh, haircuts she gets from, from her. So why on earth wouldn't we keep going? If you're The bottom line is... If you like the haircut you're getting, it doesn't matter if you get it from a male or a female, a barber or a hairdresser, a salon stylist, or just some guy who cuts hair out of the back of his house as a hobby. As long as you're liking the haircut you get, it doesn't matter. You know, all these titles and things, you know, who gives a shit, right? And, you know, like I said, the whole time that I had lived in Connecticut, I always went to a barber, always. So when I came out here and I started going to a hairdresser, it was different. It was, oh, wow, okay. But I got used to it, and it's fine, you know. And by the way, I hate to tell you this, Hodar Targ, you know, what you're saying maybe uh, for, for Europe, it's weird for men to go into a salon or a haircutting place, not a barber, but in the United States, it's becoming more and more prominent because guess what? Barber shops are actually kind of going away. I've noticed this, that they're kind of just disappearing, and what you're finding is more, more of like a, a corporatized chain of haircutting places that now exist. You know, like, I'll, I'll say there's hair, there's like a hair cutters, a hair masters, a, I'm trying to think, there's like a lot of these places, um, just in my local mall, there's like two of them that are like chains, they're not, it's not like an individual business anymore, it's a chain, and it's very hard to actually find a barber anymore, um, so I actually think in the United States at least, barbers are kind of being phased out as an old archaic thing, and now it's being more focused on these hair cutters, salon, etc. Okay. Um, so that's just the truth of the matter. All right, so continuing on, Hank tipped me another $5 and actually said, um, shout out for Rob and wishing him a happy birthday. Well, there you go, Rob. You got an extra birthday shout out from Hank. And actually, I received another $5 anonymous donation that said, happy birthday, Rob. So Rob, you know, a stream frequenter. 
and a frequent contributor. A lot of people wishing you a happy birthday, man. Thank you know, I hope you have a good one. And thanks to everyone who is contributing here. I appreciate it. Very nice. Oh, very nice. Uh, let's see here. Haseo X4 just did a 50-bit cheer and says, with so many people complaining about the Sonic character, do you believe they will redo his character before the movie comes out? Well, if you're not aware, the people in charge of the Sonic the Hedgehog movie apparently came out on social media and said, we are listening and we're going to do that. Now, I already talked about this a couple days ago. It seems to me, I don't know how it could be feasible for them to do this. And the reason I say that is for those who don't know, movies are a big production. Movies, not only do they take time to film and edit, but there's all this shit with, with edit, you know, technology, especially a, game, a movie with CGI characters. The technology, get the CGI character in there. And then there's marketing. There's promotion. There's merchandise tie-ins. Okay, especially for a movie like Sonic the Hedgehog, which obviously is going to be a movie that kids are going to want to see. There's going to be so much merch and tie-ins with stuff. How are they going to now? Now, the movie comes out in September, supposedly. It's May. So you're talking, uh, you know, four months. In four months, they're somehow going to go back and completely retool the look of the Sonic character. This tells me one of two things. Either they already had awaited this happening. They had thought that this was going to happen that there might be a backlash for this version of Sonic, and they actually developed another alternate version of Sonic alongside it just in case it happened so they could swap. That's one thing that I'm already kind of thinking, all right? Um, the other thing is maybe this whole thing, I know this sounds crazy, this whole thing was their marketing ploy. They were afraid that if they just released a Sonic movie where Sonic kind of looked like Sonic, that it wouldn't get that much hype because no one really knows who the hell Sonic is. But if they released a movie with a version of Sonic that looked nothing like the Sonic that we know, it would generate enough buzz about the movie that if they switched it to a, a more uh, familiar version of Sonic, that now the movie's going to have hype behind it. Okay? And I know that sounds crazy. That's a conspiracy theory. <laughs> but just maybe... Just maybe that could be the case. I don't know. I think that would be one of the biggest marketing ploys of genius in the last 50 years, if this is the case, all right? I don't know if this is the case, but I guess we'll see, okay? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so here's the thing. Yo, could they realistically swap, swap the whole thing over to a different Sonic? I have no idea. That's up to them and their own capabilities, but to me... You would think if this movie's coming out in four months, already there's promotional campaigns, there's merchandise, there's all this stuff already lined up, ready to go with the old version of Sonic. If they change it, that's all crap now. Who's going to buy a t-shirt with the wrong Sonic on it, right? So, I don't know, man. I guess we're going to see. Okay, I guess we're going to see. All righty then. Okay, everybody. Um, the one we've gotten through all the shout-outs. The one final thing I want to do before we start with gameplay is give a shout-out to the top cheers of the week, so they at least get props for their their contributions. Um, and then we're gonna get set up here. So, shout out to the top ten cheer contributors of the week. Thank you very much to all the following people. Uh, in tenth place, Tokido Bison. In ninth place, Bent Boxer. In eighth place, Infinite Fifty Five. In seventh place, Orcs Are Dorks Seven. In 6th place, Talk Shit, Get Kissed. In 5th place, Tantamounter. 4th place this week goes to Vote Democrat. 3rd place goes to Golden Colts. 2nd place, Mr. Papavera. And sitting there in 1st place, the Almighty Turbin. So thank you all for all of your contributions this week so far. It is much appreciated. And thanks already for this support before we even started with Days Gone. Thank you. I hope you guys are ready for four more hours of fun Days Gone story development. I hope that's what we get and not grinding shit today, but I guess we're going to find out, right? All righty. So here's the deal, guys. Very quickly, I'm going to use the restroom before we start. Oh, no. Here come the groans. First, here's the restroom. He's a human. I thought he was an automaton. You didn't have to use the bathroom. No, I have to use the bathroom. We're going to take a couple minutes here, and then we're going to get started. All right, so give me a couple minutes. Then we'll be back. We'll start up with Days Gone, and, uh, you know, we'll get the show on the road. All right, I'll be right back. Thanks, everyone. See you in just a moment. 